although it may be easier to deal only with whole numbers such as 2, 45, or 120, if you look carefully, decimals appear frequently throughout our daily lives. For example, an item at a store could cost $2.75, or your favorite basketball player may average 19.7 points per game. You could take out a loan with a 4.45 interest rate, or the winner of the 100 meter relay may have completed the race in 12.67 seconds. In order to use decimals effectively, it is important to be able to utilize and manipulate decimals in mathematical expressions. Today, we're going to cover the basics, addition and subtraction. We'll start with a simple example of adding decimals. So let's try it. The first step, like you can see, is to line up the two decimals, like so. Note that because of the commutative property of addition, it does not matter which decimal is placed first. However, it will make a difference when we do subtraction. Make sure that the decimal points in each number are lined up exactly. If your decimals are not lined up correctly, you will end up with the wrong answer. Once you have your two decimals lined up, you begin to solve the problem as you would with any addition problem. First, we add the two numbers in the hundredths place, one and four, which gives us five. One plus four is five. We then add six and five, which are in the tenths place, and that gives us 11. So we carry the one over here, bring down our decimal, and now we have two plus one plus this other one. So it's three, four. And now we add three and one and we get four. So our final answer is 44.15. Let's move over to subtraction. We'll start with a simple problem. 7.5 minus 2.8. Just as with addition, the first step is to line up the numbers with the decimal point in the same place. Your expression should look like this. Begin to subtract as you would any subtraction problem. Starting in the tenths column, you will need first to borrow from our ones column because five minus eight doesn't work out. So we take one, make this six, and then carry it over. So now we have eight being subtracted from fifth which gives us seven. We bring down our decimal, and now we have two being subtracted from six, which gives us four. So our final answer is 4.7. Finally, let's do one more subtraction problem. Once again, we line up our two numbers, making certain that our decimal points are in the same position. Your expression should look like this. You may want to add zeros to balance out, so it looks it just feels like it's full there, which is fine. You cannot add them, and that's fine too. Once again, in this problem, we need to begin by borrowing from our hundredths place. So we make this a two and bring our one over. So now we have four being subtracted from 10, which gives us six. And then we had have seven being subtracted from two, which doesn't work, so we need to borrow again. This becomes four, carry over our one to have 12. So seven being subtracted from 12, that gives us five. And now we have two being subtracted from four, which gives us two, bringing down our decimal point. We have four being subtracted from zero, which we know does not work. So this becomes zero, carry our one, and we have 10 minus four, which gives us six. So our final answer is 6.256. You should now have a strong understanding as how to add and subtract decimals. Remember to always line up your numbers and make sure the decimals of each number are in the same place. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.